Liz here in Weird Bible Wednesdays. We've been talking about Matthew's genealogy of Jesus. And today we're in verse 12, which says, after the exile to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel. Shealtiel was the father of Zerubbabel. At this time in history, there was two super political powers. There was Assyria and there was Egypt. And if you remember from last video, when King Josiah went up against Egypt, even though God told him not to, he died in battle and the people of Judah, the nation of Judah became a vassal state. So they were kind of an independent nation, but they were answering to Egypt and they were taxed really heavily. And basically the new king was just a puppet. So Jeconiah became this puppet king at age 18. And this is super confusing, but the guy had like three names. He was Jeconiah, Jehoiachin, or Kaniah. After Jeconiah became king, Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Babylonians, came up against Jerusalem. He had already taken over most of Egypt's land and he came up against Jerusalem, lay siege to it. And so Jeconiah, one of his first acts of power was to completely surrender to Nebuchadnezzar. So Nebuchadnezzar, he took all their money, took all the gold from the temple. He also took all of the people of Judah captive, including Jeconiah. This was a fulfillment of God's prophecy to Hezekiah. Remember, God said the Babylonians would take the people of Judah into exile because of their idolatry. Jeconiah, he wasn't a good king. He didn't trust in God. Instead, he trusted in idols. And the Bible actually has some pretty scathing things to say about him. Jeremiah, the prophet, said this. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, even if you, Jehoiachin, were a signet ring on my right hand, I would still pull you off. I will deliver you into the hands of those who want to kill you, those who fear Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon and the Babylonians. I will hurl you and the mother who gave you birth into another country where neither of you was born and there you both will die. Record this man as if childless, a man who will not prosper in his lifetime for none of his offspring will prosper. None will sit on the throne of David or rule anymore in Judah. The Bible said none would sit on the throne of David. None of his descendants would be able to rule. However, if you remember from the beginning of the video, Matthew chapter one, it says that Jesus is a descendant of Jeconiah. What is Matthew doing? Did he know what Jeremiah said? If Jesus was supposed to be the rightful king of David, why would he say that Jeconiah is Jesus's father, a great, great, great grandfather? Is this a typo? There are a few options. Number one, Matthew is a complete idiot and he just didn't know. I don't think so. Number two, the curse, it was legit, but it was lifted. And I find this one a lot more intriguing. So after the people of Judah were exiled to Babylon, the Persians, they became the next superpower. They took over Babylon and there was a king of Persia named King Cyrus. God worked in King Cyrus's heart to allow the people of Judah to return home to their land. Did you know that Isaiah prophesied that this would happen 170 years before it did? And God even gave Isaiah Cyrus's name. So Zerubbabel was the leader of the people at the time when they returned from exile. Zerubbabel was Jeconiah's grandson. And in the book of Haggai, God said this about him. Haggai 2.23 on that day, I will take you, my servant Zerubbabel, son of Shalate, and I will make you my signet ring, for I have chosen you. Isn't that interesting? When God cursed Jeconiah, he said, you are a signet ring that I am taking off. But here, it seems like God has reversed that curse. He said, Zerubbabel, I am gonna make you a signet ring. I have chosen you. The third option is that the curse is legit and that it doesn't matter. So in Matthew chapter one, we established the lineage all the way to Joseph, but you and I know that Jesus, he wasn't actually a blood descendant of Joseph. He was an adopted descendant, yes, but he was not blood related because God was Jesus's father. So in the very next chapters of Matthew, Matthew makes sure to point out the very supernatural conception of Jesus. Joseph is not Jesus's dad, God is. Sometimes people have a problem with this idea that God curses certain people. But honestly, this isn't anything new. 
If you've read even the first few chapters of the Bible, you'll see that all of humans are cursed because of Adam and Eve and what they did. They were given an option to choose God or to sin, not choose God. Because of their sin, all of humanity feels the effect of this curse every day. We get sick, we experience wars and famines. But did you know that Jesus, when he came, he reversed the curse by becoming a curse for us. He died in our place so that we don't have to. I love how 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, for since death came through a man, that's Adam, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man, that's Jesus. For as in Adam, all die, but in Christ, all will be made alive. I think the story of Jeconiah shows us that God is so just, he does not let the guilty go unpunished, but he is also rich in mercy. Jeconiah, he actually ended off his life doing pretty well. It says that he, even though he was in exile, he was treated well by the king there. So God still had mercy on this guy. Even though he wasn't a very great king, God still loved him. Isn't it a great Wednesday to put your trust in him? Happy Wednesday. See ya.